Pastor Ed here with Daily Devotions for Tuesday, February the, 20, February the 21st, 2023. As we've been doing recently, we're going to, I'm going to base these Daily Devotions this week on the Gospel reading from this, this past Sunday, which included a number of verses from two different chapters, chapter 16 of Matthew and chapter 17. We're going to begin today with uh, uh, verses 13 through 21 of uh, Matthew 16. It's the account of when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi and asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Obviously, that was a burning question. And they said, well, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. But he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, the impulsive one, usually or often wrong in what he said. In this case, he was dead on, perfect. Simon answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. In other words, Simon nailed it. He got it right. Stories told about Karl Barth, the uh, famous theologian who was once on a streetcar um, in, in Basel, Switzerland, where he lived and worked. And a tourist to the city climbed on and sat down next to Barth. Two men started chatting with each other and uh, Bart inquired, are you new to the city? And the man said, yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Um, was there anything that you would particularly like to see in the city? Asked Bart. Well, yes, said the man. I, I'd love to meet the famous theologian, Karl Bart. Do you know him by any chance? And Bart replied, well, as a matter of fact, I do. I, I give him a shave every morning. Well, at that, the tourists jump off the streetcar, all excited, went up to his hotel room to uh, see his wife and said, um, you won't believe it. I just met Karl Barth's barber today. He'd actually met the real Karl Barth, but thought he was someone else. That's kind of the, the question here. Uh, people, um, there are people who accept that Jesus, um, was a person, lived on this earth, um, but they see him as in his own day, as a, as a prophet, a teacher, a healer, any number of things. Uh, C.S. Lewis, in his book, Mere Christianity, um, responded to that uh, tendency in this way. He said, I'm trying to prevent anyone from saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. And here's the foolish thing. When people say, I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. Uh, C.S. Lewis says the, that's the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things that Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher, he'd either be a lunatic on the level with the man who says he's a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make a choice, says Lewis. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you could spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about him being a great human teacher. He's not left that open to us. He did not intend to. That renowned theologian Karl Barth, again, was once lecturing to a group of students at Princeton uh, when one of the students asked him, Sir, don't you think that God has revealed himself in other religions and not only in Christianity? And... Bart stunned the crowd with how he responded. He said, no, God has not revealed himself in any religion, including Christianity. He has revealed himself in his son. It said that the first council of the Christian church held in 325 CE, the common era, or used to say AD, um, was called the Council of Nicaea. And the top agenda that, at that council was to resolve disagreements over the nature of Jesus in relationship to the Father. The most provocative and popular of these new teachings was something called Arianism, as promoted and represented by a fellow by the name of Arius, who taught that Jesus was not one with the Father, that he was not fully human, fully divine, although maybe almost. Um, well, the result was that merely two out of the 300 attendees, only two out of 300 sided with Arius. And subsequently, as a noted historian has said, the books of Arius were burned and his followers branded as enemies of Christianity. 
And so very early on, again, the, the question was asked even in those early days, and it was asked and answered uh, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. There's a fellow who, uh, by the name of Todd Cato, who um, has an interesting thing that I'd like to close with. He said, uh, when you travel, you sometimes ask someone else who's been there. Uh, many from here have uh, traveled to Boston or New England and have come to me to ask where to go, what to see. Well, why do they ask me? Well, because that's where I'm from. They, we trust people who've been places. Well, he says, when, when we travel by car, I sometimes like to stop at restaurants that I've never been to before. And this sometimes is not a very good idea because sometimes I've picked out real losers. And so my daughters, he says, have, have established rules at what restaurants we can stop at. They have three criteria, and any restaurant has to meet at least two of these. Number one, it's a chain, so we can trust it. Number two, there are many cars out in the parking lot, which says that it's a place that has local appeal. Or number three, that someone we know and trust has actually been there and has recommended the restaurant. Well, he says, heaven may not be a chain. I'm not sure how many cars there are in the parking lot. But when Jesus was born into this world, we now have someone who has been there and can recommend the place. Well, we'll be back tomorrow to continue this look at uh, Matthew 16 and 17, our gospel reading uh, from this past Sunday. Until then, take care. Uh, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.